Hi, welcome to What Matters Most. My name is Eric Anzalone, and today we are talking with Brad Gruno, who is the creator and CEO of Brad's Raw Chips, and we're here at the Chip Factory. A little bit on Brad. Uh, Brad started a raw food diet back in 2006. A little overweight, a little out of shape, maybe a few too many cheesesteaks. Uh, but despite a raw food diet, uh, you know, the one thing uh, he really missed was a, a good old crunchy snack. So in 2008, he set out in his own kitchen to develop uh, that snack to settle that crave. And um, two and a half years later, he was able to share that snack with the rest of us. And since Brad began his diet, he shed 40 pounds. He weighs uh, pretty much what, what he did in his 20s. He's got much more energy and is, uh, has changed his life uh, forever. And his hope is that his chips, his snacks, um, his products can do the same for us. And his mission is to inform people, young and old, of the benefits of a raw food diet. Um, like I said, we're here at his chip factory, and it's not just a factory for making chips. It's, it's a hub for cleansing, for, for uh, juicing, for music, art, yoga, uh, nurturing and raw foods, learning. Um, they hold everything here from uh, lectures. Uh, we're here today. Um, David Wolf, uh, Sacred Chocolates, is uh, speaking, and basically, it's a community center too for for the wonderful uh, community of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. So, uh, yeah. Brad, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Great introduction. That well, was great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, first, uh, why don't you give us a little background? Now, you 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 didn't always live this healthy lifestyle and eating no. raw foods and whatnot. So, how, how did this happen? Or what were you doing before this? Well, I guess, you know, like you said, having the uh, cheesesteaks, it's funny you say that, being here right outside of Philadelphia right. where the cheesesteaks started. But, um, no, I did live that kind of life, and I got into, you know, I was in, uh, as, I, as I grew up, I got into the uh, telecommunication construction business, and I was in that business my whole life. And I guess um, from uh, that point is when the whole telecom industry kind of fell apart. Yeah. And then I kind of stumbled into the raw, to the raw food world. And... Um, yeah, but how, do, how does one stumble into raw foods? I mean, well, when you go on a walk one day and go, I'm going to eat that. <laughs> well, nobody yeah. does hear about it, you know, yeah. and I, I did. I actually had, I, I, I live here in Bucks County, and I have a, a very large family here, 27 cousins, a lot of aunts and uncles, and one of them went over to Arnold's Way, which is a, like a local raw food restaurant here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have, Arnold offers these classes. And uh, so she had um, actually introduced it to me because she just wanted to, you know, uh, share with the family these recipes that she made. And that's how I first learned about it, was just having dinner at my aunt's house, mm -hmm. all raw food, five course meal. And, uh, and, and, then, uh, and then right after that, a few days later, she had bought this disc called Eating. And I listened to that disc. And that's what really the light bulb went off in me. And I listened to that. It was just talking about obesity and about diabetes and diseases and just, just all about the processed food that we're eating. And just something clicked, and the next day I went 100% raw. And um, and so, so then was your next step? I guess you started volunteering in raw food restaurants, uh, working in an organic farm. Yeah. Was this a choice you made because you were getting into? Did it lead, did it come out of the fact that you made the choice to eat raw foods, or was that just a coincidence? That well, no, it came out of making the choice to just eat better. Yeah. You know, and then I got you know as a the raw food restaurant, I would go back there a lot just to kind of meet other people that were in the raw food like you know what happened to you how did you go about it you know how did you feel i just wanted to know you know what i mean just to ask other people that were on the raw food diet but, just to talk with them but so you weren't like already formulating because you come from that business sense sure you it was all were, new but all you, new were you head. already formulating a plan to start your own company or were you just changing Never. your lifestyle oh no no i mean it's you know when i went raw you know uh for the first two years I never thought about the business, yeah. you know, because I came from the construction side. I was always in fiber optics and construction my whole life, you know, working all over the United States. So I was, at the time, as I'm eating raw, but I wanted to feel better, and that's when I lost my weight, and I, I felt better. I had more energy than I ever, ever had. 
And, but I was out trying to search what, what my next career was going to be. Mm -hmm. So I was going to like these go green conventions and I wanted to get into power or wind and something, something new out there. And that's really when, you know, this is several years after I, that I learned about Raw and actually how, where the light bulb went off of even selling these things is by going to a go green convention. And there was a guy there that had a booth. It was kind of weird to me. He was selling food and it said living salsa. I'm like, I, you know, I can, I, I can kind of relate with that. And he was like serving these people at this convention, this living salsa. But he was serving it with like a tortilla chip. Now, for two years, I'm making my own raw chips, you know. And I'm just like, did you ever think about like serving this salsa with a raw chip? And um, he, um, he says, yeah, well, I, he goes, I just never found one that I liked. And that's why well, I happened to make them. And he goes, wow, well, I'm going to be doing a show out by you in Bucks County. He goes, why don't you bring some by? So I did. I went out and he goes, oh, my God, I love these things. We let, a, we let a few other people try them. Mm -hmm. And everybody loved them. And he goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, there's another Go Green convention in um, New York City. And he said, uh, why don't you meet me up there next month, make a bunch of chips, and I'll serve your chips for the whole time. I'm like, oh, sure, I'll do that. And... Uh, so I went up there and I made a bunch of chips. You know, it's just out of my one, like out of my one dehydrator at my place. And uh, so we went in, I helped him set his booth up. People start coming in and he'd serve the salsa. And then a couple people would say, wow, what's this chip? And he would say, well, you better talk to this guy back here, you know? So I'd go up and start talking to him. But an hour or two later, I had a crowd of people around me asking me about the chips. And no one was really paying attention to him about the salsa. Uh -huh. So he finally came to me, because Brad, because I, I, I hate to do this, but I got to get those chips off the table. And I'm like, you know what? The light bulb already went off in my head. You know, being an entrepreneur, yeah. I'm thinking the chip business is a multi-billion dollar industry. You know, and it's one of the most unhealthy aisles in a grocery store. Absolutely. You know? And so I just went ahead and, and you know, at that point, I'm like, you can throw those chips away right now. I'm at home. Yeah. And that's when the light bulb went off. So I still wanted to prove it to myself. You know, and, and, and so I wanted to just talk to individuals so how I just went about it was going to farmers market so I went to my local Ottsville farmers market and um, just uh, you know just where I can talk to everybody and explain to them what that was and everybody I explained it to it just thought it was a great idea there was nothing out there like it yeah. and so I just started doing four farmers markets a week and then so I went ahead and I, I converted a one-car garage into my little first chip factory right on an organic farm. And um, were, were you able, I mean, are there health lice? I mean, do, are there issues? Did you have to get the health uh, department did. involved? Because it sounds like you're setting up a factory in a garage sounds a little almost well, you know, yeah. I mean, but, shiny. But. Right. Well, you know, every small business got to start somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just, I, I had to get it approved by the state ag department. So, of course, it started in one car garage, but, you know, right. so does the house start in the frame too. Absolutely. But we just had to make it. We just had to make it a certified uh, kitchen that was uh, state state certified, and uh, but most of the vegetables came off the farm when it when when in season, and um, so that's the time I was just selling in farmers markets, and then I finally got into one store, two stores, and then I went down to Whole Foods, and I asked if I can get into one store, and it was kind of neat for me because um, as I'm doing all the farmers markets, when you're selling a dehydrated chip. You know, out in the rain or the humidity, and right, the chips get, get getting it. it's getting soft, and I'm like, wow. And then I, I, I can remember the first time Whole Foods said, you know, went ahead and accepted me into the store. I'm like, wow, this is great. You know, I can go into Whole Foods. It's all temperature controlled. Right. It's never going to rain on me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And so I would sample in there, and then you know, really after after that point, and just in that one store, we were doing fourteen thousand dollars a month per store. It didn't take me long to figure out how many stores there are out there. So, now let's get let's get into like the sort of metaphysical, the spiritual side of raw food. Uh, I, I read on your uh, website, I believe, about um, how you know working in the earth, you know, grounds you. And actually, I've always sort of believed that, like, when I get really stressed out, sometimes I'll just go outside and hug a tree, literally, yeah, yeah. because there is the true energy that you are grounding. Um, I would imagine to a certain degree when you're eating raw foods, you're all, it's almost like yeah. you're getting a grounding experience yeah. because the food is still basically chemically what it was mm -hmm. in, in, in its natural state, correct? Right, yeah. So, I, you know, this that whole time, I mean, it's, it's got a whole other story how I really, I feel I got more connected with myself at this point because, 
you know, I've always been in the corporate world, always had a very large construction company, and it was always about, you know, fancy dinners, fine wine, and making a lot of money, and you know what I mean? It was just, it was just all, you know, all about the money. Yeah. And it's kind of neat that I was able to really shift gears and do something so different in my life right now. I never thought I'd be selling raw chips today, but... But as, as I had lost my company and really humbled me in a way, I lost, it every, I lost everything I had. And um, so that's when I really kind of wanted to go within. You know, that's when I moved back home and kind of just, you know, started to go within. And that's what really intrigued me to, to work on an organic farm. I didn't want the money. I just wanted to work on the farm, you know, and really talk about connecting in the earth and just really going within and getting to know myself, you know, and just it's really it's not all about the money, you know, and just doing something that I was very passionate about because raw foods would have did it really changed my life. Mm -hmm. It changed my life so much that I would just, you know, I felt better. Everything I'm, mean, I'm looking back, I'm thinking all the things I've done. I said, I've never felt this good before. But, you know, but, here I am close to 50. Right. And I, I, I'm, I'm back to my weight that I was when I, you know, was in high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just now I just have more energy than I've ever had. And it just, totally changed my life and then that's why I just got to be so passionate about it and I wanted to share it. Now you, you do travel a lot. Um, travel a lot you, now. <laughs> you, you ever cheat? Obviously I travel a lot too and, and you know I eat a certain way. I'm almost vegan, almost vegetarian, you know, but, but I travel sometimes to Poland or somewhere where forget it. You know? Sure, sure. Uh, do, you, do you ever have to cheat or do you ever sometimes go, ooh, I'm going to do well, what, what, what? What's your definition of Well, cheating? I don't know because like, if, if, you're, if you're a raw foodie, I'm not, I mean, no, I'm not. You're not a strict. Oh, okay. no. Okay, no, that's what I'm, I was curious. I'm not. I'm not 100. percent Just no. This is how it played out for me. I, I, I think that when I went 100 percent raw, I felt so good. I stayed that way for a year. I lost 40 pounds in three months, and then after that, I, I maintained the raw diet mm. and I just maintained my weight. And it was just you know, after a while, you know, I kind of fell back and forth a little bit. I think that's kind of normal. But every time I would, I, I, I just wouldn't feel right. You know what gotcha, I mean? Yeah. So, you know, today I, the way I live my diet is like an 80-20. 80% raw foods. And something that Arnold taught me at Arnold's Way, it's just, it's all about, it's all about adding good foods to your diet. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take anything away. Just add. Absolutely. And, you know, and I've always lived that way. And, it, and I'm, you know, I, I'm writing the process of uh, writing a book, and it's about 80-20 it's about the way I did it, and um, uh, Random House just actually bought the rights to my book, and I'm really excited Fantastic. about that. And I have to spend the next two months finishing it right now, but yeah. really, really excited. Well, about let's that. talk about the, the future. Um, what what are you working on here at, uh, at at your raw or your chip factory? I mean, like I said, it, it's a lot more than a chip factory. I mean, uh, right. granola, flax, wine. Is this yeah? Did I hear you that? probably see a little. You probably saw a bottle of wine. Too, no nice. Yeah. <laughs> beer is beer. Raw beer. No, you know, no, no, we got no. That one? We, we yeah, we we kind of thought about that. Yeah, but but no, where we are right now. I mean, we have grown so fast. You know, we are. Um, you know, we'll probably be at a $12 million mark by the end of the year. You know, in two and a half years, we have been through a lot. We have moved, you know, three times, and we're just about full capacity in the factory we're in right now. But um, so where I'm, where I'm at right now, the future holds right now. It's just we, we want to create. We have only have our, our leafy kale and the chips is what mm -hmm. you see here. And uh, we just want to expand our line and mm -hmm. having the... Uh, raw granola cereals. We want to make snacks for kids to put in their lunch pails, some smaller, some smaller containers. You know, we're going to get into raw chocolates. We're going to get into cheese. We're going to get into a whole line where we can just be a one-stop shop. And uh, today uh, you have uh, David Wolf. Uh, David visiting. Wolf. Yeah, yeah. excited. You're going to be here any minute. Uh, isn't that fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, how did yeah. that? Did you contact David or or? Oh uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I did. I was just, you know, at, you know, we just moved into this facility um, uh, at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. and we just finished this space right now, uh, which is very beautiful. And I have to give all the credit to this to my mm -hmm. sister and her husband Richard Finch, and they just, you know, really it was the art side of the family, and they came in really. She did the mural on the wall and the you know, plastered walls, and so we just uh, really just finished this, and we, I, I, I just wanted to really start this off with a bang and who not better yet to have is David Wolf. Yeah. That, you know, that's just one person that I've always looked up to as I got into the role. Mm -hmm. I followed him, I've been in his longevity, you know, before yeah. and 
I've just really watched him, and he's just he's just a phenomenal guy, and he really you know I look him his at him as being one of the the leader in the in the yeah. in, in, in the raw food, and I think that where I'm really playing a big part is I'm really hitting the mainstream, you know, maybe in a bigger way and kind of putting it in their consciousness. And then, and then to me, you want to learn more, you go to David. Yeah. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. Uh, so to, to wrap things up, we always ask our guests, um, what matters most to you? Uh, meaning what's that, that lasting footprint or image that you'd like to leave on this planet? You know, I think one of the biggest goals that I've, 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 by always being in a business, I've always been an entrepreneur, always have my own business. And I think why we have built this educational center, I just what I, I really want to I feel like I can give back now is giving back and it's about the education. And now that we're getting a business, we're starting to make a profit and being sustainable. And that was my first goal. And now it's really spreading the word. And it's just, you know, I really want to get this into schools and I want to get this with kids. Yeah. And I think that's really what my my goal is to really you know is get it in the kid kids hands and just sure really Future just generations exactly it's, it's, and just and just bring awareness and i think you know uh with my book that's coming out and uh, i just think that we're able to really hit mainstream right now and really get the word out yeah. that's my goal wonderful yes well brad thank you so much for uh for talking with thank us. you this too. Wonderful. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, this is Eric Anselm just reminding everyone that it's the simple things in life that matter most. Namaste.